A large fitness center in Gangnam, Seoul, is bathed in the rays of the setting sun. Screams and loud conversations are heard from the small staff room. Choi Kang-hyuk is broadcasting live to his subscribers. He is the founder of the channel Best Fitness Maniac. Viewers write in the comments that the coach has a great body and are interested in what new things he will show them today. Kang-hyuk has a lot of food on his table. He's seen a lot of requests, so one of his popular requests today is honey chicken and kicks beer. Viewers think it's just perfect. They lose muscle when they look at it. Kong Hyuk starts eating and ravenously tears a chicken leg with his teeth. This is delicious. The guy enjoys his food and doesn't forget to take a sip of beer. The audience is delighted. This guy's muscles scream that he's a sports freak. Of course, no one is born a fitness freak. What led him to this obsession? One day his body was horribly injured. He couldn't even just walk. He was seriously injured while serving in the special forces. He was carried out on a stretcher. He had a long rehabilitation ahead of him which was based on the methods of manual therapy and physiotherapy. After that, he tried almost every type of exercise from yoga to Pilates to strengthen his body. He also studied nutrition rules and various diets. At some point, Choi Kang-hyuk became one of the best coaches in the country. He was the best rehabilitation specialist in Gangnam. All sports publications wrote about him and awarded him the title of best fitness trainer. What happened to him sitting in a small room at the fitness center and doing mokpan, eating a lot of food on a video blog? Two thoughts wander through his head at this time. What will happen to his muscles after all this junk food and how delicious everything is? The coronavirus pandemic that has swept the whole world is to blame for this. Quarantine restrictions, loss of customers, all this hit Choi Kang-hyuk hard. To cover the cost of maintaining a gym that could not fully operate, he had to become a streamer. But the profit was still not enough for five gyms. Sometimes he could not hold back his tears. The live broadcast has ended. Tomorrow there will be a new one. Kang Hyuk addressed the audience, subscribe like press the bell. He radiated cheerfulness and positivity. As soon as the broadcast ended, Kang Hyuk's face changed. He was in complete hopelessness and did not know how to survive until tomorrow. He ate chicken and beer. It's a calorie bomb. I would like to exercise, but alcohol puts too much stress on the body. He wondered how it happened that he was now in such dire straits. He needs to rest for a day. He already went to the doctor. The doctor said that the hair loss that was bothering him so much was caused by stress. Kang Hyuk had a hard time digesting this information. The doctor continued to say that Kang Hyuk did not notice the accumulation of fatigue because he was previously healthy. But his body is on edge. The guy needs to reduce his working hours, otherwise he will soon go bald. Kang Hyuk imagined himself bald and it didn't fit in his head. This can't be true. He will never be able to date girls and will remain lonely. He imagined how girls would refuse him a date and go off with guys who had normal hairstyles. The doctor strongly recommended that Kang Hyuk rest, but under current conditions this is impossible. He was always working or training. What will he do? We need to find something to do. By the way, he remembered that before his life became so busy, he was very fond of Murim novels as a child. Choi Kang Hyuk was raised by his grandparents who were never rich. The boy often borrowed martial arts novels from the corner bookstore. These moments became precious childhood memories for him. He remembered that his grandfather often scolded him for going to the bookstore too often. Kang Hyuk looked through lists of Morim novels on his phone. He came across Gaikin's novels, which he had previously loved so much. Return of the Ultimate Demon, Tyranny of the Unorthodox Faction. He saw that this author had published a new series of novels, The Chronicles of a Shaolin Monk. The description said that the main character, Mu Jin, who has just entered the Shaolin Temple, is honing his skills and paving the way as a martial artist. This is the first time Kang Hyuk has come up with such a name. He became interested in the novel, and I decided to read a little. From the first pages, he really liked the book. His whole life consisted of work, training, and rehabilitation of difficult patients. Now memories from childhood pop up in his head when he covered himself with books and read. Choi Kang Hyuk's eyes began to droop, and without even noticing, he fell asleep on the floor without finishing reading. A bright light poured from the phone, which was lying next to the parne. Kang Hyuk woke up to someone next to him calling an unknown Mu Jin, who had to go to training. He jumped, convinced that he was late for work. What he saw in front of him shocked him. In front of him stood a boy who desperately shouted that the others had already left, and they would be the last to come. They will be shouted at again. Kang Hyuk couldn't understand what the child was doing here, who he was and why he was bald. He said something out loud, and the boy answered offendedly that he was not a child and was definitely bigger than his friend. Kang Hyuk decided that the boy was not himself. Choi Kang Hyuk is a professional trainer. 
who formerly served in the Special Forces, with a height of 180 centimeters and a weight of 90 kilograms. He put his hand on the boy's shoulder and asked how long he had had vision problems. Besides, how did this kid get into Kang Hyuk's house? He looked around the room and froze. This was not his room. He looked at his hands and did not recognize them. He turned his head and a terrible guess dawned on him. In horror, he screamed loudly and stamped his feet. Where did his hair go? And what is this house from the TV series? Where is it? He remembered that the boy called him Mu Jin. This is the same name of the main character in the novel that Kang Hyuk read the day before. Has he really become Mu Jin? His body, his muscles, where did it all go? He remembered that he dozed off while reading a book. Most likely it's just a dream. This happened before when he read a lot. Kang Hyuk breathed a sigh of relief. His comrade reminded him that now they would definitely be late, and Kang Hyuk agreed that he had to go. They ran out into the street. If this is just a dream, then you need to enjoy what is happening. They were met with menacing shouts that they couldn't be late for the first training session, and the boy would be taught a lesson. The teacher ordered them to quickly take their places. Kang Hyuk was amazed at the realism of his dream, and asked for forgiveness for being late. Kang Hyuk found the first exercise very difficult. Stand in a position where your knees are bent, and your arms are extended for a long time. This exercise can easily ruin your knees, but it will not bring any benefit. Choi Kang Hyuk started working out during his rehabilitation. He knows better than anyone how important lower body exercises are. Sometimes he met trainers who paid all their attention only to the upper body. They were missing the whole point of the activity. And when he saw such meaningless exercises, legs spread too wide, boys arching their backs unnaturally, the fitness trainer inside him began to scream. The teacher reminded the students that the lower body is the basis of all martial arts. Kang Hyuk was mentally indignant. If you know about this, then why give such exercises? The teacher continued to instruct the students that they need to learn to maintain balance in their legs. Otherwise, no fighting stance will be successful. Fortunately or not, Kang Hyuk was not the kind of person who would silently watch the exercises performed incorrectly. He shouted that there was no point in telling all this to children who couldn't even maintain their posture. Even if all this is happening in a dream, Kang Hyuk was screaming about ignorant bastards who don't know anything about exercise. From such words, not only the teacher but all the students were speechless. No one could understand what happened to Mu Jin. The teacher asked menacingly, how dare the boy talk nonsense during training? The rest of the teachers joined in and began to shame the boy. He makes excuses because it's hard for him. How can you call yourself a Shaolin student after this? It was like being in a martial arts novel. The energy was felt even in the scream. But Kang Hyuk was not going to give up. He simply pointed out the error. The teacher leaned over the boy and asked if he really thought that Shaolin training was wrong. Kang Hyuk was again surprised by the realism of the dream and decided to play along with the participants. He will speak like a martial arts expert. If they use the same methods, knee injury could become a big problem in the future. The cartilage will wear away, and in a joint without normal cartilage, the bones will rub and collide with every movement. The teacher replied that all these are excuses for the weak. Kang Hyuk felt that learning martial arts required sharpening the body and mind. And now the teacher says that this is all only for the strong. There is some kind of contradiction here. The second teacher replied that the boy had misunderstood everything. They study martial arts to improve themselves and achieve enlightenment. Kong Hek asked, according to the teacher, Shaolin cannot help the weak achieve enlightenment. The evil teacher growled that deliberately making training more difficult helps strengthen the mind. The human spirit is weak. People seek comfort, and this opens the way to evil. Therefore, training is designed to prepare people for difficult times. Kang Hyuk asked, So the teachers are suggesting that they destroy their bodies at a young age because they won't need training in the future. The students began to whisper that there was a lot of truth in their friend's words. The teacher no longer knew what to do with this brat. Kang Hyuk pointed at one of the monks, and asked how difficult his training was. Is he already aged, but has not achieved enlightenment? The teacher's face was distorted by an angry grimace. How dare a little kid say that? Especially towards the first-class student Hai Jong. Hai Jong also heard the small boy's remarks and growled in anger. His loud roar hurt everyone's ears. All the students on the playground covered their ears with their hands and wanted to be away from the scene. Hai Jong approached the boy and said that all martial arts are aimed at self-improvement but Shaolin martial arts are also aimed at protecting sentient beings from evil and demons that can harm them. Kong Hyuk brazenly asked, would it really be easier to defend with bad knees? Hai Jong didn't know what to do. If we leave everything as it is, then this young talent will have a bad influence on children. But adult students cannot punish young monks who have just come to Shaolin. Then he invited the boy to show by his own example how to do it correctly. 
Let the boy try to defeat the one who is trained according to the methods of Shaolin. Kung Hyuk asked who is his opponent. Isn't it Hai Jong himself? No, it will be a student who joined them at the same time as the boy. He ordered disciple Mu Gyun to come forward. Mu Gong bowed and left. The teacher gave seven days for training. Mu Jin can train as he sees fit. And in a week the fighters will compete in sparring. Mu Gong gladly accepted the challenge. He was a strong and tall boy, unlike Mu Jin. Kyung Hyuk clearly saw that his opponent was in a different weight category. This cannot be called a fair fight. He realized that Hai Jin was only pretending to be attentive, but in fact wanted to crush him so that he could no longer argue. He stood next to his sparring partner and thought all kinds of bad things about the dishonest monk. Hai Jin was pleased that his plan was a success. After the fight, the boy will never argue again. Kung Hyuk happily agreed to the fight. He was confident that he could handle it. The teacher resumed the training. Mu Jin's comrade asked why he agreed to the fight. All he had to do was apologize to Hai Jin. The teacher's shout for Mu Yul to return to his place stopped the conversation. The teachers and students looked at Mu Jin disapprovingly. What was he thinking? In seven days he will be defeated. Now Mu Jin was doing his exercises during training. The teacher called out to him and asked him why he was acting out. The boy replied that Monk Hai Jin gave him permission. Does the teacher want to ban? Is his rank higher than Hai Jin? Hai Jin stopped the teacher as he passed by and said that promises must be kept and let Mu Jin train himself. The boy sincerely felt sorry for the other students who were ruining their knees. To be subjected to such terrible training at such a young age, Hai Jin could hardly contain his irritation at the sight of the impudent boy. Choi Kang Hyuk, who trained for about two hours early in the morning, hoped that he would get more food. He did not yet know what problems he would have to face. A small portion of rice and vegetables, that's all the food. In front of him was a completely vegetarian menu. Such dishes are quite natural for a temple, but for a martial artist, where do you get protein? Kang Hyuk was shocked. In addition, he was surprised that in his sleep he smelled food and the smell was pleasant. But plant food alone was not enough for him. He was loudly indignant, and immediately the teacher shouted that there should be no talking during meals. Kang Hyuk continued to be indignant. They trained all morning. Is it too cruel to feed them only vegetables? The teachers are off the hook. How much more disrespect will the brat show them? One of them decided that this would not work, and that the boy needed to be taught a lesson. For successful training results, you need protein, but where can you get it with such a diet? All of Kang Hyuk's training could go to waste. Hen Moon, who was in charge of all the food in Shaolin, entered the dining room. He looked at the boy and said that he seemed very hungry. You can take supplements, but Mu Jin replied that this was not enough. Hyun Moon decided that all these were the complaints of a hungry child. You have to be generous, so he suggested another side dish. Mu Jin asked for at least chicken breast. Everyone who heard this dropped their jaws. What kind of nonsense is this boy talking about? Mu Yul asked if his friend had problems with his head. Mu Jin yelled that they all needed protein. Mu Yul grabbed his friend's hand to calm him down. Mu Jin realized that it had been strange all this time. He was tired from the exercise, smelled the food, and still didn't wake up. This is not a dream, but reality. We urgently need to deal with the situation. Now he is a young Shaolin monk. Something appropriate needs to be said. He lowered his head and said that he was very hungry and behaved badly. He asks for forgiveness for saying too much. Hyun Moon confirmed that the boy was just tired from training and there was no need to be angry with him. Mu Jin asked for mushrooms or beans, which also contain protein. Hyun Moon was speechless. Where do mushrooms or beans come from? The guy is definitely crazy. Whether it's a dream or reality, Mu Jin needs protein. After training, the children went to class, where they learned Buddhist texts. It was very boring. Mu Jin thought that if he entered the world of a novel, how could he return back? Then it dawned on him that if this is a book, then he needs to wait until the end of the plot. If you think about it, the situation is not bad. Mu Jin is the main character, so he has impressive talent. The Shaolin Temple is the strongest in the Orthodox faction. We are talking about that same Shaolin, the North Star of Mount Tai. Mu Jin was lost in thought and didn't notice how he made an ink in his notebook. There is one problem. He attracted too much attention to himself with his behavior. But there is nothing to be done. The seeds have already been planted, and he will win the sparring and force everyone to accept his training methods. Hyun Moon talked to Hai Jong and assured that Mu Jin is a unique child. Hai Jong apologized for the student's behavior. Hai Jong said that he gave the boy a week to prepare for the sparring. Hyun Moon praised Hai Jong for his wise decision. You cannot punish children for every reason. Hyun Moon knew that a sparring match was scheduled with Mu Kyun and Mu Kyun shows the highest result among those who came this year. Every year the Shaolin Temple selects students from among hundreds of children. Some of them cannot withstand the harsh training and leave on their own. Others teach basic things and change the temple. 
Of all the children who come, only a tenth ends up in the main temple. Therefore, the first year of study usually does not allow you to make your name famous. Mu Qun is a rare exception to this rule. Mu Qun will, of course, correct Mu Jin's arrogant behavior. Seven days have passed. It's time for sparring. Mu Jin and Mu Qun stood opposite each other. Earlier, Mu Yul looked at his friend in surprise and did not understand what he was doing. Mu Ding replied that this was a stretch. Mu Yul had never heard such a word. Mu Jin thought about using martial arts names and added that it was a tendon lengthening technique. Stretching is a set of actions that are performed before starting basic exercises and prepares the muscles and tendons and relaxes the whole body. There are many poses and techniques that will increase flexibility and increase the range of motion of your joints. Mu Jin suggested to his friend that if he was interested, he could try it too. He showed the boy how to do the exercise correctly. Mu Yul understood everything perfectly and did a good job. At his age, everything was grasped quickly. The rest of the students wondered what those two were doing. At this time, screams were heard. Everyone look at Mu Yun's blow. The boys turned to look. Mu Qun was training for sparring and his fists were very strong. The sound of air cutting was even heard. All this made an impression on the audience. They thought Mu Kyung was amazing. Mu Jin knew that he would be in trouble if he missed such a blow. This is the guy he should go against after a week of training. He looked at Mu Gyun and thought how to defeat him. It seemed impossible. But then one thought occurred to him, and he decided that there was a way. The sparring has begun. The opponents looked at each other. Hai Jong was the judge. Hai Jong looked at Mu Jin, who was determined to fight, and thought that it seemed like all these were not just excuses from a boy who doesn't want to train. Although he did not listen to the teacher's instructions, he had his own training. He remembered seeing Mu Jin near the tree he was hitting with his fists. Mu Jin told Mu Yul that he was practicing a method that he could use to defeat Mu Gyun. Hai Jong was sure that Mu Kyun would teach the boy a good lesson. Mu Kyun was proud that monk Hai Jung was looking at him with approval, but he knew that this monk would also become a step on his great path. Mu Jin, meanwhile, was warming up before the fight. He was doing some stretching when Hai Jong approached him. The boy said he could start. Hai Jong couldn't decide if the boy was bluffing or just showing off. He commanded the soldiers to take a step forward. Mu Kyun was determined to show Mu Jin who was the strongest. The judge announced the start of sparring. Mu Kyun had been honing the power of successive strikes for three months and was now going to demonstrate them to everyone. Mu Jin immediately rushed to attack the enemy. Mu Kyun did not expect such a swift attack. He dodged his opponent running towards him, and with his fist, he delivered his strong, consistent blow. The blow missed the target. Mu Jin deftly dodged. It happened so quickly that the spectators did not notice the movement. Hai Zhang was surprised by Mu Jin's speed, and Mu Jin ducked under the enemy's fist and grabbed his leg although he was ashamed that he was using modern martial arts techniques on a child. The techniques taught to Kang Hyuk could even kill if they made a mistake. He decided that in this situation, the most suitable technique would be one that even Mu Gyun could withstand. This is the easiest capture. Mu Gyun fell to the ground with a crash. The time it took to seize the initiative from Mu Gyun was about one second, and then Mu Jin used another simple technique, an elbow lock, which made Mu Gyun scream. The teacher shouted at Mu Gyun to quickly break free and get up. Some didn't understand what it was. The students shouted that this was impossible and did not believe that Mu Gyun could be brought down so quickly. Mu Kyun was completely overwhelmed and could not resist. He thought about what his opponent had done to him. He had never heard of this before. Some second-year students quickly came to their senses but gave only useless advice to transfer all their strength to their legs or try to roll over. And although none of them saw how a hand grab is made, years of training make it clear that this technique is very painful. Mu Kyun screamed nonstop. Mu Jin whispered to his opponent that he would break his arm if he did not surrender immediately. There was a suspicious crunch. The students shouted at Mu Gyun to get up. His opponent had barely trained. There was a crunching sound again. Mu Jin persuaded his opponent that if he made more effort, his joints would fly out. One mistake and the guy will remain crippled for life, and Kang Hyuk really didn't want that. Something crunched again. The spectators shouted for Mu Gyun to get up. The enemy offered to surrender. Mu Gyun's head started spinning. His joints were already cracking incessantly. He was screaming in pain, and Mu Jin did not loosen his grip. Everyone looked at this scene in numbness. What happened was impossible. Finally, Mu Jin let go of his opponent, who was screaming in pain. The disciples, with trembling voices, called out to Monk Hai Jong, who was standing next to them. He was wondering what to do now. The situation was not easy. At this time, Mu Jin felt the shoulder of his crying opponent and scolded the monk who forced the children to fight. Hai Jong announced that Mu Jin had won the sparring match. Consecutive strike is one of the eight fists of extreme measures. The basis of the attack is the fist, elbow, and shoulder. 
helps to quickly kill an opponent at close range. Known for its outstanding power, Mu Yun mastered it better than other monks of his age. Even some of the second-year players were impressed by his late hitting. But this wonderful and well-honed technique did not help this morning, and Mu Yun lost miserably. Without the slightest resistance to a strange boy monk with a strange technique, Mu Yun cried his eyes out. Mu Jin consoled him when he heard Mu Qun accusing him of winning unfairly. The enemy immediately ran at him and attacked him with an incomprehensible technique, and not with a consistent blow. The boy believed that in a fair fight, he would certainly win. Mu Jin did not argue and called the enemy a flower, who is the best and strongest. Mu Yun burst into tears even more. He is no flower. His name is Mu Qun. They were observed by second-year students. They noticed that Mu Kyung was right. Shaolin martial arts should be used in sparring among students of the Shaolin school, as all students believed. And Mu Jin broke this rule. Mu Jin could not understand what kind of nonsense they were talking about. The student asked why Mu Jin didn't use consecutive strikes. Mu Jin did not understand what they were leading to, and began to explain that in this case, the pairing would turn into an endless beating. Both fighters would have been seriously injured, so he concentrated on suppression. This is the basis of any sparring. Of course, Mu Gyun burst into tears, but they were able to avoid serious injury. The students objected to him that Shaolin masters do not fight like that. Mu Kyun continued to cry. Everyone arguing could not believe that Shaolin's consistent strike was so easily defeated by a young, inexperienced child with a strange technique. Hai Zhang didn't want to admit it, but Mu Kyun lost. He couldn't agree with it. People may begin to doubt Shaolin martial arts. In the worst case scenario, students will start leaving. All the senior disciples and monks were waiting for Hai Zhang to tell them what to do. Finally, Hai Zhang smiled, and this smile instilled hope in the hearts of the monks. He definitely came up with something. Hai Zhang turned to Mu Jin and asked if he wanted to say that he used this technique so as not to harm Mu Qun. The boy confirmed this. Hai Zhang announced that Mu Jin remained true to the path of Shaolin and won fair and square. This answer had the effect of a bomb exploding. Hai Zhang continued, The reason why Mu Jin's technique was more effective than the sequential strike is because Mu Jin's opponent is a weakling. Mu Guyu trembled at these words. They never called him weak. The highest goal of martial arts is victory over evil, which also succeeds in martial arts. Hai Zhang will personally show Mu Jin the essence of Shaolin techniques, and also real power that can defeat any demon. Hai Zhang took a fighting stance and ordered the boulder to be brought. Two students dragged a huge stone with difficulty. Mu Jin never thought he would see a man about to break a stone with his hand. He was all attention. Hai Zhang was about to show the boy the power of a consistent strike. He clenched his fist, which glowed with a soft light from the energy directed into it, and dealt a powerful blow to the stone. Both the stone and his hand lit up with a flash of power. A moment later, the stone fell apart into small fragments. Mu Jin, like all the other students, were delighted with Hai Zhang's power and strength. The children shouted to each other that such a huge stone shattered with one blow, and they can do this too if they train. Hai Zhang was very pleased with the effect produced. Mu Jin was delighted. Finally, he saw real martial art. This is how they should be, a force that can carve a road through a mountain. One swing of the sword destroys hundreds of enemies, a blow that explodes the enemy. Here Mu Jin faltered, explodes the enemy. He called out to the departing Hai Zhang and asked, didn't they just talk about suppressing the enemy without hurting him? Hai Zhang confirmed. Mu Jin pointed to the stone and said that only crumbs remained of the stone. All the spectators froze over the pile of rubble that remained from the boulder. A strange silence engulfed the training ground for the second time. Hai Zhang left the same day after training, went to see Hyun Sung, the leader of the Arhat Hall, Hai Zhang's teacher in charge of education. The teacher was surprised to hear that the child Mu Jin defeated Mu Gyun with one move. Hai Zhang confirmed that this was the case. Hyun Sung noted that the boy is very unusual. Hai Zhang thought that the boy was just arrogant. Mu Kyun has been training for so long. Hyun Sung asked what is the student afraid of. The fact that the boy only needed one glance at the technology to find its fatal flaw. Hai Young said seriously that he was afraid that if this boy turned out to be a spy for an unorthodox faction, or a demonic cult, he might be. Hai Young remembered the boy's old behavior in class. Hyun Sung didn't think so. If the boy was a spy, he would not attract attention to himself. Yi Zhang suggested that this could be done on purpose. Hyun Sun replied that first of all, this is a new student. Therefore, he will be under constant surveillance and hidden motives will become apparent. Or maybe the boy comes from a family of martial artists. It sounded plausible. The guy himself did such strange training. Perhaps he inherited these methods from his family. Hyun Sung believed that the highest figure in a child's life is his father. 
Maybe the boy just wants to prove that his father's techniques are stronger than the thousand-year-old Shaolin techniques. Mu Jin would faint if he heard this nonsense. Hyun Sun saw the problem that after defeating Mu Kyun, the guy would become even more self-confident. He decided to entrust this matter to Bo Gan. Hai Jong wondered, wouldn't Bo Gang become part of the disciplinary hall that controls the laws of Shaolin? Hyun Sung replied that Bo Gang himself volunteered to join the Arhat Hall. He can help. After the evening training, the students hurried to rest. They had to go past the training ground, but one of them noticed something and suggested they go another way. They looked and saw a strange man. They recognized Crazy Dog and Rule Fanatic Bo Gan, who was training alone. He had been training recently but continued his training. The students considered him very stubborn. At the same time, they knew how he got the nickname Crazy Dog. It's better to call him the Dog of Rules. The students laughed. One of them said with a laugh that in the disciplinary hall, the dog was the one who ruled. But they told him that starting tomorrow, Bo Gan would move to the Arhat Hall, and the guy was not amused. Everyone said that he would stay in the disciplinary hall and become a master. Why would he go somewhere else? The student did not want to live with Crazy Dog at all again. Bo Gan was one of the most influential monk disciples. He always imposed discipline on others, even if they were senior Shaolin monks. They say that he will visit all the halls to thoroughly study the laws of Shaolin, and then he will return to the disciplinary room. This fanatic only thinks about the rules. Bo Gan, defender of laws, tried harder than anyone. He believed that it was wrong to impose rules on others that you yourself do not follow. He also spent more time on basic training. His knees were constantly subjected to stress from improper exercises. They were in such a state that without using internal energy, it was difficult for him to walk. They were already so damaged but he didn't care about that. Basic training strengthens the mind and body, and Bo Gang considered pain part of training the mind. He had just finished his stance and was about to take care of Mu Jin. The troubled up-and-comer looked like a shark with an evil grin in Bo Gang's mind. Bo Gang decided to do everything to return him to the true path of a Shaolin student. All the students in Arhat Hall were surprised when they saw Bo Gang. He told everyone that he had joined the Arhat Hall. Mu Jin and Mu Yul were glad that they weren't late today. Bo Gang publicly announced that he would be happy to work with the Arhat Hall. Mu Jin admired Bo Gang's pumped up body. He looked like a soldier. All the students were wondering why Bo Gang decided to join them. Only Mu Jin immediately understood the situation. This is the same Bo Gan, the defender of the rules. Morning training has begun. Once again, the students did the wrong exercise. Bo Gang was in no hurry to approach Mu Jin. He believed that you need to understand a person in order to guide him. He passed by a boy who was doing the exercise in his own way. With an experienced eye, Bogan noted that the guy's legs were spread shoulder-width apart, his back was straight, and his hips were pushed back. The toes protrude slightly forward. Bogang repeated the stance he saw Mujin perform. The boy inhales as he moves and exhales as he rises. Bogang didn't feel the difference, the same pain as during normal exercise. Is this some kind of trick to avoid working out? At this time, Mujin turned to him and noted that all this was being done wrong. The stance in which Bogan is standing is incorrect. Bo Gang asked what was wrong, and Mu Jin realized that he would have to teach him basic things. He didn't know why Bo Gan copied his exercises, but the boy heard the unpleasant grinding of his joints when he bent his knees. The body is screaming about injury. A self-respecting coach cannot ignore this. Moreover, it would be nice to win over the disciplinary master to your side. He has power, and Mu Jin sarcastically thought that such friendship could make his life easier. Bogan repeated the question, What is the problem? Mu Jin replied that these exercises would cause more harm if performed with damaged knees. Can the master do what the boy tells him? Bo Gan agreed with surprise, and now he is already doing stretching exercises under the guidance of a small trainer who admires the student's flexibility. Mu Jin said that this is a tendon lengthening technique that will help relieve tension in the knees. Bo Gang felt the pain in his knees gradually disappear. Mu Jin recommended doing these exercises before training. Bo Gang felt a noticeable difference in his condition. You need to do one approach, that is, repeat three times with an interval of 30 seconds. Bo Gan didn't understand what this approach was. Mu Jin changed his approach for once, but at this time Bo Gan was caught by the knee. The boy approached him and began to lightly massage his knee. Bo Gan winced in severe pain. Mu Jin saw that the master was in pain even from a light massage. This training puts stress on his joints. No wonder he's so injured. He continued to massage Bo Gang's knee and Bo Gang mentally noted that at first, it hurt from just one touch. But now there was relief. The massage session ended, and Mu Jin said that they were on the second repetition of the exercises, but were interrupted. Now they will start again. Bo Gang didn't really want to repeat. 
but the boy pushed him in the back and said that training would not wait. Bo Gang could not understand who this Mu Jin was. They started training again. Bo Gan felt that everything was easier for him. Hai Zhang and the students had no idea what this child was doing to Bo Gang. Bo Gan, the one who tries to follow all the rules. He has been watching every student nonstop since he arrived at the Shaolin Temple, and everyone has long known how obsessed he is. But that same Bo Gan was training in a friendly manner with a new strange monk, who told him that the exercise must be repeated 15 more times. Bo Gang sat in a narrow squat, and Mu Ding wondered how comfortable he was. Feels like sitting on a chair, but his knees are in bad shape. Therefore, he needs to bend his legs weaker to reduce the load. Now Bo Gan stood in a mini squat. Now Mu Jin was going to talk about the order of doing the exercises. Bo Gang listened with interest. Mu Jin showed how to slowly bend your knees and take a semi-sitting position. Do not put pressure on your knees while squatting. The entire load is transferred to the hips and buttocks. When lifting, the load goes there. Bo Gang did everything correctly, and Mu Jin asked how he was feeling. The monk replied with surprise that it was very good. He felt that these exercises caused significantly less pain. After three repetitions of the exercise, Mu Jin suggested moving on to the calves. He was going to show the benefits of an experienced personal trainer. All of his clients, who looked like soldiers, had a frightening appearance, but they easily made contact with friendly people. Kang Hyuk complimented them on their posture or exercise skills and cooperated well with them. Now he behaved the same way with Bo Gang. He admired how quickly the monk mastered the stance. Tom was pleased to hear this. He replied that he had been studying in Shaolin for 18 years. The students who watched this thought that the crazy dog had gone crazy. Or is he so angry with everyone because they come up with offensive nicknames for him? Hai Jong got such a headache from this sight that he decided to ignore the couple. It's time for breakfast. Mu Jin told Bo Gang to repeat everything he showed when he trained his lower body. This works best if you do the exercises before starting your main workout. It seemed that Bo Gang was silently following Mu Jin's instructions, but it was not blind faith. He decided to trust the boy when he tested the exercises on himself. After doing stretching, physical therapy, and massage with a top-notch trainer, he felt like they were all great techniques. Not only the method of performing the exercises was effective, but also stretching the tendons along with acupressure. Bo Gan hardly felt the throbbing pain in his knees, and the muscles of his limbs were strongly stretched. He asked the boy if these techniques were used in his family. Mu Jin didn't understand the question. Bo Gan explained that the techniques are very effective. The boy's family is very unusual. It looks like these techniques have been perfected over generations. Mu Jin was glad that such a convenient misunderstanding had arisen. Of course, he acted very suspiciously and tried to figure out how to change everything. But the answer came on his own. He joyfully answered the monk that, of course, his family taught him. Bo Gang replied that he admitted that help with his knees was very helpful, but monks study arts that have existed for thousands of years. He understands the boy's pride in his family, but the temple training also needs to be done. Mu Jin promised that he would listen to Bo Gang. Mu Yul walked over and asked if they had finished their classes. The boys ran to lunch. Hai Zhang approached Bo Gang from behind in a very bad mood. Bo Gan apologized for appearing before him in such an unsightly manner. Bo Gang said that he needed to know the enemy in order to defeat him, so he tinkered with Mu Jin. Hai Zhang was interested in what he found out. In his opinion, Mu Jin comes from a family of doctors, not martial artists. Hai Zhang asked for an explanation. Bo Gang admitted that his knees were in very bad condition. Hai Zhang was outraged. Why didn't anyone know about this? Bo Gan did not want to bother the teachers and senior monks, and was primarily afraid of showing weakness in front of the juniors. Even those students with whom he had trained for over ten years did not notice anything. But Mu Jin understood everything in an instant. He showed him new movements, and now his knees are not so heavily loaded. The boy definitely comes from a family of doctors who also trained in martial arts. All these guesses were completely off the mark. But Hai Jung didn't know this. He was worried that this talented child might ruin the entire Shaolin training system. To this, Bogan replied that he would return the guy to the right path. Younger people always obey the elders with whom they become close. Instead of forcing him, you can gently introduce him to the temple's training methods. Hai Zhang agreed that everything needs to be done carefully. During the day's training, Mu Jin was very unhappy. Mu Yul said that his friend has a purple face. Mu Jin knew this. He did not like the lessons of Buddhism and he was so hungry that the death of the young talent for malnutrition seemed quite real. Hai Zhang told the boys that they had all learned the sequence kick. Time to move on to the next step. The true power of martial arts is revealed only when internal and external energy are in harmony. From this day on, children will learn to manage internal energy. The two older students will demonstrate everything. Let the boys take the lotus position they have been studying. 
Mu Jin had a hard time remembering what the lotus position was. The senior students sat in the lotus position. Hai Zhang ordered everyone to close their eyes and concentrate on breathing. You need to inhale slowly and deeply through your nose and exhale through your mouth. Everyone continued to breathe until they reached the core of energy. Mu Jin was delighted that he would finally learn real martial arts. They were given only physical exercise, and now they are learning something truly amazing. He began to sit in the lotus position. Mu Jin was not the only one who was waiting for this. After hard basic training and striking, everyone made it to the first stage of martial arts. A new type of training will become an incentive for young monks. They will study thousand-year-old Shaolin techniques. Everyone dreams of succeeding and breaking boulders like Monk Hai Jung did. Everyone focused on the monk's words and began breathing training. Mu Jin, however, noticed that the exercise was somehow strange. The monks advised the student to maintain his posture and concentrate. Even if it was breathing training, it was different from the one described in the novel. They are not taught about Qigong techniques, or about eight phases according to Fusi. What about Eastern philosophy? An hour later, Mu Jin, who had been challenging the Shaolin techniques up to that point, this time diligently followed the instructions. He was very excited. It's time to study everything properly. The power that allows people to split entire mountains and soar in the sky, the power that goes beyond the real, must belong to him. He will learn the most important things from this Murim novel and be able to use those skills. There was a command to open your eyes. Mu Jin did it. The trainer said that the Tonap technique, which they had just mastered, is the easiest way to accumulate energy in your body through breathing. To master the Qigong technique, they need to feel the energy. You need to practice tone up every day to learn to feel the energy. Mu Jin was very disappointed that they started from the very basics and would not park Qigong. He knew that for internal energy, one must first feel the qi. At this time, the coach gave him some book. He explained that this book depicts the path of energy in the human body. Hai Zhang, when asked by the boy why the book is so thin, replied that there is no need to memorize a thick book. It is enough to remember the basic information on the path of energy. It is needed to control energy and subdue the enemy. Mu Jin was glad that now he would immediately understand how to achieve his goal. The path of energy is the path along which human energy and strength flow. Not only qi flows along this path, but also a person's inner strength. Therefore, before learning martial arts, it is necessary to understand this main element. Hai Zhang put a student from the senior class in front of him and, using his example, began to talk about how everything works. This is where the path union is located. It passes through the scalp. This is the path along which energy passes. Mu Jin intended to remember everything. That evening, Mu Jin walked around the yard and repeated what they were asked. Learn the main energy points in the body and practice storing energy with the help of Tonap. Once he masters Tonap, he will be able to master the basic techniques of Shaolin. At this time, Bo Gang met on his way. He also recognized the boy. Bo Gan still stood in a half-squat position. He said that his knees began to hurt less after the technique that Mu Jin showed him, and Bo Gang is now training even more. The boy saw that Bo Gang's knees could not stand it and were simply screaming for help. He grabbed his head. He talked about exercises to help your knees heal faster. This does not mean that you can increase the load. Bo Gan said that the more you hit iron, the stronger it becomes. Let the kid look at his hands. He coached for 18 years. Mu Jin wondered where the muscles would come from if high-quality protein had never been seen here. He calmed down and replied that the iron should be hit moderately. If you hit it hard, it would break. It's the same with the human body. Bo Gan's eyes widened. Mu Jin invited Bo Gang to sit down and said that he would help him relax his muscles. This will hurt a little. Bo Gang almost screamed in pain. The boy said that pain in this case is normal. While Mu Jin was giving the monk a massage, he remembered the old days. The time when he served in the special forces, his body was on edge due to the grueling daily training. Despite all the hard work, his many years of service came to an end due to injury. As a result, he was forcibly written off. At that time, he was completely lost. All bandaged with broken arms and legs, he didn't know what would happen to him now. He sat aimlessly on the street and didn't even want to go home. Bo Gang reminded Mu Jin of himself from the past. The boy began to tell him that if his body was damaged, Bo Gang would have to bear the responsibility for it himself. You need to take care of your body. His words sounded so sincere that Bo Gang put his hand on the boy's head and said that he did not know what Mu Jin had to go through in this world. But Shaolin did not abandon its students just because their bodies were in bad shape. Even more, no matter what happens, the temple will not abandon its student. Bo Gan laughed. Mu Jin listened carefully to the monk. If so, then that's very good. 
Bogan said that starting tomorrow the boy trusts him and begins to practice Shaolin techniques. Then he screamed because the massage was very painful. After the procedure was completed, Bo Gang asked what the student would do. Mu Jin was going to practice Tonap. Bo Gan was surprised. Did someone from such a family really know nothing about Tonap? And haven't learned to feel energy. Mu Jin remembered that he had to pretend and mumbled that due to family circumstances he could not learn how to do this. Then Bo Gan invited him to practice together in the yard. Who knows, maybe if Bo Gang is around to perform energy detection techniques, the boy will be able to feel the energy much more easily. This sounded very convincing to Mu Jin. Even if he tries to feel his energy, he will not understand what exactly it is like, since he does not know himself. But if someone uses the energy nearby, it might work. He yelled at the top of his lungs that he was ready for training. The mentor told him to concentrate, look carefully and study. If this helps the boy, Bo Gang will be very happy. He closed his eyes and was enveloped by weak threads of energy. Mu Jin did not take his eyes off his new teacher. So this is what it looks like. It seems even the air has changed. Streams of power flowed around the teacher. Now Mu Jin needed to understand the difference between his energy and Bo Gang's energy. Meanwhile, the streams of power began to acquire color. They seemed like red flashes. These streams of power became noticeable to the boy. When he was alone, he didn't notice anything like that. Could this be the same key he had heard so much about? The flames of power flared up around Bo Gang more and more. Now Mu Jin had to figure out how to find his energy. He remembered the lesson. When exhaling through the mouth, you should concentrate all the evil energy in your body and throw it out. And with a deep breath, draw the pure energy of nature into the center of the body. With this combination, Mu Jin will be able to find the difference between his energy and Bo Gang's energy. The boy did everything as taught, both breathing and posture, but pure energy was not obtained. He inhaled again, felt the energy, visualized, directed the flow of energy and felt the golden core ignite in the center of the elephant plexus. Here it is. He felt the power of qi. There was one thing that worried him. And this is the result of his labors. This luminous speck is the size of a grain of rice no more. It is so small that it seems like a miracle. Memories from his past life came flooding back to him. If you can call the chips truffle chips because they contain a millionth of a truffle, then the creation of a small golden kernel of qi can be considered a success. Mu Jin quickly perked up. Bo Gang looked at the boy's smiling face in amazement. Did he already feel the key? What Hai Zhang and Hyun Sun said about him is absolutely true. This child will become a thousand-year pillar of Shaolin. To some extent, Mu Jin felt and sensed Kui. He was also used to breathing steadily. But for some reason, it became much colder around him. He opened one eye to see what had happened. It was night. Bo Gan greeted his student. He finally came to his senses. Mu Jin couldn't believe it was already so late. He apologized to Bo Gang. I didn't think time would fly by so quickly. Bo Gan told him to hurry to the dorm. They would announce curfew soon. While Mu Jin duly thanked mentor Bo Gang for the lesson, Bo Gang watched in amazement at the eagle of power that enveloped the boy's shoulders and arms. He had just discovered Ki Ki in himself, and it had already reached such a level. He made the boy happy that he could now learn the initial Shaolin technique, the Buddha's heart technique. Mu Jin asked, although he can sense Ki, shouldn't he memorize all the energy paths? Bo Gang stared at him. Didn't the boy learn this from his family? Mu Jin realized that he had screwed up again and replied that he was joking. Bo Gang went to his room, telling the boy to hurry to the bedroom. Mu Jin was unhappy that Bo Gang kept talking about his mythical family, and tonight we must definitely learn all these energy paths. Early the next morning during training, the teacher called forward everyone who had sensed Qi and learned the ways of energy. Mu Jin yawned at the risk of twisting his jaw. He barely remembered everything at night, but he is proud of himself coming forward. He wasn't the only one who was so smart. The children came out and stood next to him. This came as a surprise to Mu Jin. Was it that easy to do? Why are there so many of them? Hai Zhang was pleased with the results of the training. He was about to tell them what they would study next. Mu Jin already considered himself an unrecognized genius, but it turned out that he was just one of many. Hai Zhang showed the book to the students and said that it described the Buddha heart technique, which is the basis and foundation of the principle of the Shaolin mind. Hai Zhang opened the book and began to tell the students who felt the key, everything in sequence. The first lesson was an introduction to technology. It didn't last long. The rest of the students, who didn't have a good lesson yesterday, watched how well their classmates were studying. Could they really understand key and energy paths in one day? It turns out that it is so. Mu Jin and other bright students returned from Hai Zhang, having gained new knowledge. Mu Yul asked his friend how he learned all this, and why their new lesson was so short. 
Mu Jin replied that it was just the beginning and not difficult at all. He began to tell his friend that first the incoming energy must circulate throughout the body from one place to another, and if, when raising qi, it is directed incorrectly, it can be dangerous. Mu Yul listened with wide eyes. He had many questions. It dawned on Mu Jin that Mu Yul did not understand anything of what he had just heard. He decided to help his friend. Mu Yul will be able to comprehend everything in a short time. You need to focus on your breathing. But the boy didn't do well. He giggled and became distracted. Mu Jin remembered the entire map and the order of the paths well. The Buddha heart technique is the primary teaching of Shaolin. He sat down in a meditation position right in the courtyard, much to Mu Yul's surprise. Mu Jin felt his energy accumulating faster. It's as if a number with four decimal places became a number with three decimal places. He truly studies and understands fighting techniques in the martial arts world. He feels like he's growing, and it's a lot of fun. The core of Chi Yi flared up more and more brightly in the boy's chest. Martial arts, and he is the main character here. Mu Jin's training went smoothly. He controlled breathing and energy, but his meditation was interrupted by a voice calling him. He turned around and saw Mu Yul carrying an unconscious student on his shoulders. Mu Jin realized the situation and asked his friend where he got this body. Mu Yul replied that it was not just a body. This student was punished. Mu Jin expressed hope that it was not Mu Yul himself who punished the guy. It turned out that Mu Jin was being punished for entering the mountain early. Mu Jin didn't understand why Mu Yul was carrying the punished man so strangely. The boy replied that it was impossible to convey Mu Jin in any other way. He was very heavy. Mu Jin crouched down and looked at Mu Jin, who was hanging unconscious. There were traces of dirt on his face and clothes due to the way Mu Yul carried him. But traces of beatings were visible on the body. Mu Yul didn't even realize that someone had beaten Mu General. He thought that he just felt bad. Mu Jin explained that the boy had signs of beatings on his body and marks on his clothes. Then Mu Jin wondered why he knew Mu Jin's name. He remembered that unlike other children, this boy had an emaciated appearance, sunken cheeks, and a thin body. It seems that Mu Jin remembered Mu General, but the memory that just popped into my head was of a completely different kind. He didn't remember his face, but the name seemed familiar. However, now it didn't matter. Mu Yul asked why the boy was sentenced to such a punishment. He really wanted to find out, and he hoped that Mu Jin would help figure it out. Mu Jin had an idea what happened. He decided to find out everything from someone who knew it better. Mu Yul did not understand at all who he was talking about. Mu Jin replied that if Mu Gen was told to be punished, then there was definitely a person who climbed the mountain before him, the one who sparred with Mu Jin. Mu Yul opened his eyes wide. At this time, a gloomy Mu Gyun approached them. The boys looked at him intently. Mu Kyun angrily asked what they wanted from him to make them stare like that. Mu Yul sadly asked his friend, was it really Mu Gyut who beat the boy like that? Mu Jin was not at all sure that someone who was crying after sparring could dare to hit someone. But Mu Yul said earlier that of all the disciples, Mu Kyung was the first to go to the mountains. So if anyone can know something, it's him. They approached Mu Kyun to find out everything. Mu Kyun was not in the mood for friendly conversations. He was very angry. Mu Yul held his comrade on his shoulder for so long that his strength left him, and he released Mu Gen's leg. The boy fell to the ground with a loud thud, which did not add to his health. Mu Yul was very upset. He didn't want this to happen. Mu Gen was ready to give up the end right before their eyes. The three boys were frozen in silence. He was interrupted by Mu Gyun, who repeated the question, What do they want? Why on earth should he take precious time away from training to talk to them? Mu Gyun furrowed his eyebrows menacingly. Mu Jin noted that his longtime enemy was behaving very strangely. But he asked out loud, Isn't Mu Kyun the master's best student? And aren't the students more important than the training? Mu Kyun didn't remember when Mu Jin became his student. Mu Jin laughed. So this thug liked being beaten up by a younger student. Mu Ju's face was distorted. He replied that he was not in a fighting mood then. Mu Jin laughed even harder. Mu Kyun first lost to a weaker student, and then cried out to the teacher for help. Mu Gyun sharply struck the impudent little boy who dared to laugh at him. Mu Jin did not expect such agility from his opponent, and jumped away. He grabbed Mu Gyun's clothes with his hands, conducted a counterattack, knocking the opponent down. I grabbed his head in an elbow grip, and performed a twisting technique. Mu Kyun froze, unable to move. This scoundrel is using strange techniques again. Mu Gyun lost again to a weak student. Mu Jin was confident that he could beat such a stupid fighter a hundred times. Mu Kyun thrashed furiously, trying to get out of the grip. Then Mu Jin suggested that he tell him what happened to Mu Jin and why he was in such a state. And then he would tell him why he always loses to Mu Jin. He released Mu Gyun, and he jumped away from him indignantly. 
The resentment from the defeat in the last fight resulted in Mu Qun's bitter hatred for Mu Jin. A proud man, defeated by a technique unknown to him. He must be very interested in why he is losing and he is very nervous. But first, Mu Jin wanted to find out what happened on the mountain. Mu Qun didn't think long. He said that Mu Jin beat Mu Te and his henchmen. Mu Jin had never heard of Mu Te. It turned out that this was the only son of Figuk Sobul from the subsidiary Shaolin clan. Mu Gen is the son of a master from the side clan. It is said that Master Hyun Moon went to take Mu Te as a disciple, but there he noticed Mu Gen's talent and took him along with Mu Te. The problem is that Mu Te began to offend Mu Gen, saying that he was inferior to him in origin. Mu Jin's indignation knew no bounds. How can a Shaolin disciple do such things? Mu Kyung replied that nothing can be done about it. Mu Kyung's father works for Mu Tai's father. Therefore, the boy cannot resist and give back to the offender. If this were a regular school, this would be understandable. But this is the Shaolin Temple, where the way of Buddha is taught. Mu Jin yelled at Mu Gyun. Why was he looking at such a thing? He's the strongest here. Mu Kyun didn't understand. What was he supposed to do? Mu Jin shouted that to protect the weak, of course. So there were three attackers. How to deal with them? Mu Jin pointed at Mu Yul and replied that this guy always said that Mu Kyung was the strongest boy. They both looked at Mu Yul, who was silently looking at his quarreling comrades. Mu Kyun embarrassedly replied that Mu Yul simply sees him that way because he, like many students, is not very well trained. And those bad guys come from side families. Mu Jin understood everything. Of course, the martial arts of the side families are based on the Shaolin martial arts, so they already know the basics and therefore don't train as hard. Mu Jin remembered the guy who came forward with him in training today. This guy seemed to be a bad student. His thoughts were interrupted by Mu Gen who woke up. All three of them stared at him as the boy tried to sit up. Mu Jen, a novice student of Nahandan, could not understand where he was. Without figuring out what was going on, it seemed to him that the three guys posed a threat to him. He screamed loudly and crawled back. Mu Jin said that he would not harm the boy. He smiled kindly and said that he knew about all the guy's circumstances. He was beaten and humiliated so much that he became like this. How can school violence even exist in the Shaolin Temple? Of course, Mu Gen could turn to Hyun Moon, but he is afraid of retribution. After all, his father works for the father of the offender and may suffer. He turned to Mu Gen and said that he would try to help him, let him listen to him. Mu Gen didn't believe that anyone wanted to help him. Mu Jin decided to report these guys who are harassing Mu Gyeong in Hai Jiang and Master Hyun Moon. Mu Gen was taken aback by such advice. Is the guy kidding me? Then they won't leave his father alone. Mu Jin replied that this could be solved simply. Mu Gen needs to become Zhan Shan's disciple. A Zhan Shan student is one who continues his studies while residing in the main hall. Disciples of side clans usually come from outside. And no matter how high a position they hold, they cannot just touch a Zhan Shan disciple who belongs to Shaolin. However, not everyone can become a Zhan Shan disciple. And everyone understood the purpose for which Mu Jin made this proposal. Except for one child. Mu Yul just stood there and looked at his comrades. Mu Jin continued to develop the topic. How can pathetic disciples from a side clan threaten Shaolin disciple Zhan Shan and his father? Of course, there was a possibility that everything would turn out badly, but Mu Jin did not voice it. He remembered Bo Gang's words that Shaolin would never turn away from his student, no matter what happened, and decided to check it out now. How true are these words? He extended his hand to Mu Gen and suggested that he try to implement this plan. Mu Gen didn't answer, he just trembled. Does he really not have confidence that he can become a disciple of Changshan? He didn't seem to notice Mu Jin's outstretched hand. Mu Jin asked if the guy wants his father to continue to work for a family that treats his son this way. If the son gives up, the father will have to dance to Mu Ge's tune. Mu Gen continued to tremble and remained silent. Apparently he was happy with everything, Mu Jin decided. And at that moment the guy extended his hand to Mu Jin, and they shook hands. Mu Jin agreed to Mu Jin's proposal. He'll try. At least once, but he will try throwing away all fears. It's time to talk about the background. Mu Yul didn't even understand everything about the first plan, and he hadn't even heard about the second. Mu Jin continued that Mu Jen should not suffer until their first plan comes to fruition. First, they will beat Mu Tae. It won't be difficult at all. Three days later, during the afternoon free time, the students gathered in the courtyard. Mu Tae, the only son of the head of the security department, Sibul, was waiting for Mu Gen to come to him on his orders. If the guy dares to disobey, he will inform the family, and Mu Gen's father will not be happy. The guy's henchmen, Mu He and Mu Huan, were happy that they would finally flex their fists about Mu Gyeong. They haven't mocked him for two whole days. True, they heard that he made friends with some strange guys, Mu Jin and Mu Yul. They're probably just as idiots as Mu General. 
There's also that big guy with them. It's generally unclear what he's doing with them. They'll probably all go away today. This is even better. It should have been shown a long time ago who is boss here. Everything was going great for Mu Te. He had long wanted to beat Mu Jin. Mu He and Mu Huan remembered how proud Mu Jin was. They also wanted to punish him. And Mu Gen will cry as before. He also needs to know his place. Last time he held out for a long time until he lost consciousness. Mu Te turned towards the voice that said that he did not expect to be considered proud. Does he give that impression? He saw all four guys walking towards them. Mu Te didn't believe that Mu Gen had brought everyone here. Mu Jin walked ahead and really hoped that the idiots would not immediately run away at the sight of their company. Mu Te's henchmen laughed. Why should they run away? Just because Mu Jin once defeated this big asshole who is now with them, that doesn't mean he's the coolest. Mu Jin really didn't like how they called him. He promised to make sure words like that never came out of the boys' mouths again. The boys moved towards their opponents. Mu Te also stood up expecting a fight. Mu Jin, who was mentored by Mu Jin, decided to deal with his main offender personally. He was unsure of his abilities, but there was nowhere to retreat. Mu Jin asked if Mu Jin remembered everything he taught him. If you remember, then there is nothing to be afraid of. But Mu Gen still had doubts about his victory. At this time, Mu Yun was reminded of how he cried after sparring. The guy got even more angry. The guys were preparing for a serious fight. Mu Te mockingly said that he was jealous of Mu Gen that he had friends. But has Mu Gen really become so impudent that he can hit Mu Te himself? Does he remember the consequences? Mu Gen was scared. He thought that it would be better if everything remained as before. Mu Te asked if Mu Gen knew what would happen to his father, if he even touched Mu Te. Mu Gen became even more scared. He had a very kind, caring, and loving father. Mu Gen also loved him very much. Mu Jin was sure that in order for Mu Gen's father not to suffer, Mu Gen needed to beat these guys and become Zhan Shan's disciple. He flew into a rage, struck Mu Te in the face, and shouted that he should not touch his father. Mu Te was shocked. He managed to dodge the blow, but could not understand how this could happen. The next blow to the body achieved its target. Mu Te decided that his opponent had gone crazy. At this time, Mu Kyun calmly blocked his opponent's fist with his hand. He could not escape and asked to let him go. But Mu Gong continued to press on Mu He's fist, who felt an enormous force that he could not handle. Even the atmosphere around them changed and became threatening. Two days before this mass fight, Mu Gyun really didn't want to get involved in a showdown with Mu Te and help Mu Gyun. Mu Jin thought that he was just afraid, which infuriated Mu Gyun. Of course, he decided to join the company. Then Mu Jin began to teach Mu Gyun, who kept losing to him and did not understand the reason. His consistent striking technique was strong and powerful, but that's not all. This is not enough. Mu Jin attacked Mu Kyun with the first form of this technique, and Mu Kyun had to try to dodge. Mu Kyun did it perfectly. The blow missed its target. Now Mu Jin warned that he would attack with the second form of the technique. Mu Kyun knew that it wouldn't be difficult to evade here either. While he was dodging, Mu Jin unexpectedly performed a low kick and kicked him in the knee. Mu Gyun fell to the ground screaming that the asshole had deceived him again. Mu Jin replied that of course he cheated. Who will just stand and wait for the predicted blow? You need to deceive the enemy for the attack to work. For Mu Gyun, this was a revelation. Mu Gyun's blows were certainly fast and powerful, but even before he throws a punch, his stance makes it clear what he's about to do. Mu Gyun objected that if the blow is very fast, then even if the opponent predicted it, he would not be able to do anything. You just need to hit quickly and hard. Mu Jin agreed with him. Someday, far in the future, if Mu Kyung decides to become the strongest in the world, then his words will be justified. In the new work of the author of the Chronicles of a Shaolin Monk, which is called The Journey of the Apostles, the main character was known as the best in the dark arts and the strongest in the world. And his skill with the sword was described as incomprehensible, which could not be blocked, even if it was known in advance. But if you are not the strongest in the world, then this does not apply to you. Therefore, until then, you need to use cunning like in the game Rock, Paper, Scissors. You pretend to throw the paper when you have something completely different on your mind. Mu Kyun began to understand what this guy was talking about. And now he was blocking his strong opponent, who did not understand what was happening. And then he released his fist and said that he was going to attack his opponent with the first form of the sequential strike technique. Let him try to dodge it. Before this, Mu Kyun thought about Mu Jin's words that until he becomes the strongest, he must use feints. And we need to learn this right now. He used to think that only cowards use deception. But why? Using feints is not cowardly behavior. Mu Kyun was rethinking his view of the world. This guy is probably right. And now he himself wanted to give Mu Jin some advice. Mu Jin himself said that he wants to fight Mu Te and his minions. It is dangerous to underestimate them just based on the fight with Mu Kyun. 
Mu Jin tried to understand where the guy was going and what he wanted to say. Wasn't he the one who said that he was stronger than everyone, and then defeating Mu Te would not be difficult? Mu Qun replied that he did not fight Mu Jin with his full strength. If this was a real fight and not sparring or training, he would have used his family's martial arts. Obviously, he would also use the accumulated internal energy. The boys trained in a remote corner where no people walked. Mu Jin asked if that was why Mu Qun insisted on training here to show off the family's martial arts. Mu Qun replied that he did not want to upset the elders and show what he was capable of. Mu Jin asked Mu Yul to watch carefully too. Mu Qun was going to greatly surprise his opponent. Mu Qun hoped that after this demonstration of his capabilities, Mu Jin would finally respect him. He concentrated. Waves of energy enveloped him, and he rushed with lightning speed to strike in the air. Mu Jin saw that this technique was different from when Mu Qun demonstrated the sequential strike technique. He had the power and strength of a high school boxer. Of course, he is not as strong as he thinks he is, but given his age, the guy is quite a monster in battle. With each blow, the air is torn apart. That's why he said he could be dangerous, Mu Jin thought. If you fight Mu Te and his minions, he will definitely use the techniques that were taught to them and their families. Mu Qun's fist stopped a few centimeters from Mu Jin. Will the guy respect him now? Mu Jin said that the guy's technique is impressive. He understands why this fighter is considered the strongest among the students. But he cannot yet freely control his internal energy. If that's all he can do, then he can be dealt with. Now, in a fight with Mu Te and his minions, Mu Jin took a fighting stance, and he didn't move. Mu Huan asked why he was standing there. If Mu Jin does not attack, then Mu Huan will do so first. He did so and flew towards his opponent. Mu Jin already understood that there is a certain posture to control his internal energy. He quickly dodged Mu Huan's fist. Still, the subsequent blow was predictable. Mu Huan's range of motion could be easily calculated. Mu Huan did not expect that the enemy would be able to dodge such a blow. Now it was Mu Jin's turn, and he ran at his opponent, using the Dempsey Roll technique, a series of sweeping side blows, each of which aimed at the opponent's head. Mu Huan covered himself with his hands. Mu Jin saw that the enemy was protecting his face, and he delivered a strong, quick blow to Mu Huan's body, which he forgot to protect. Mu Huan roared like a wounded bull. He clenched his hands above his head to bring them down on the little asshole. But the asshole deftly dodged and broke the distance between the fighters, and his opponent fell to the ground. Mu Jin loomed over him with his fist clenched menacingly. His fist slammed into the ground near the prone boy's head and punched a hole in the tile. Unexpectedly for Mu Jin, his opponent burst into tears. He promised to complain to his father. Mu Jin knew that if he complained, he would make Mu Jin look very bad. This bastard bullied Mu Jin so much and now he's crying? In the heat of the fight, Mu Jin forgot to watch how his other comrades were doing. Mu Gyun was doing great. His opponent didn't even last one round and was lying on the ground. Mu Jin turned his gaze to Mu Gen and was dumbfounded. Some strange sounds came from the scene of the boys' battle. Mu Te lay unconscious, and Mu Gen shouted something triumphantly. No one would recognize him as the timid teenager he was recently. He did not stop hitting the prone opponent. Mu Jin was afraid to separate the fighters, shouting for Mu Jen to stop beating. He finally remembered after seeing such Mu Gen where he had heard that name. The one who completely changes the face of the opponent. The one who stains both hands with the blood of the enemy. Mu Te was already in a very poor state. Mu Jin's eyes were full of madness, and his opponent's blood was on his face. Mu Jin was sure that it was him. The hero of Ga Yun's first novel, Return of the Supreme Demon. The most insane villain character ever. He loves blood more than anyone else. Mu Jin is a bloody monk.